if you're an investor who's seeking higher returns and more cash flow on a monthly basis while minimizing risk for maximum profitability, then this video is for you. As I'm about to run through five of the best dividend ETFs or exchange traded funds that pay a monthly dividend. With that, I only have one question. Are you ready? So before I cover the ETFs, I always think it's important for you to understand why I suggest the ETF route in the first place, as opposed to say just loading up on a handful or dozen of individual stocks. Now, it's really quite simple. The answer is none of us, and I mean none of us, not even the greats like Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger to Peter Lynch or John Bogle can consistently uncover the diamonds in the rough of the market. Now, let's be honest. If that were the case and it were that easy, we'd all likely be millionaires by this point in time. However, with the introduction of indexing or investing into funds, investors now have the opportunity to play it incredibly safe while enjoying consistent returns as a single share of an ETF is an investment into a whole basket full of stocks. But there is just one layer of complexity added to the mix for those of us seeking monthly dividend income with dividend stocks. That's the fact that a lot of dividend stocks aren't that reliable. Many are often yield traps, meaning they pay a hefty dividend, but ultimately that share price goes down over time. So we want to avoid that and to navigate through the muck of all of this, doubling down or loading up on stress-free, reliable cash flow machines like monthly dividend exchange traded funds are the answer. Which leads me now to our most reliable dividend ETF on our list, the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF, ticker symbol SPHD, which delivers on its name in terms of low volatility. But now bear in mind that lower risk yields lower reward, which is why I would argue that this particular ETF is really for someone in retirement or who really doesn't have the means to fight the market storms yet still in need or still wants monthly cash cash flow. Anyhow, this ETF will invest at least 90% of its total assets in common stocks that comprise the S&P composite. And ultimately, it's composed of 50 total securities that historically have provided high dividend yields and very low volatility. So in other words, we're talking about holdings like Altria Group, AT&T, Verizon, Kinder Morgan, One Oak, Dominion Energy, Crown Castle, Lyondell, Simon Property Group, and Williams Companies, currently making up the top 10 holdings of this ETF. Yet, Yet with a broad range of sector exposure, we're talking about 19.57% in utilities, 15.39% consumer staples, 14.42% in real estate, 11.10% in the energy sector, and 10.66% in healthcare. I think it's a pretty good steal here, which enables investors to rest easy given the fund's dividend yields coming in at 4.72%. You're only going to pay $30 per $10,000 invested annually given the expense ratio is at 0.3%. But what would a $10,000 investment into SPHD look look like. If you invested that lump sum of cash 10 years ago and did absolutely nothing, you'd then be sitting on $22,286.28 today, working out to about an 8.34% annual return, which is not too shabby and quite similar to Amplify's CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF, ticker symbol DIVO, which is another safe bet, an option out there for more risk adverse investors as an actively managed ETF of high quality, large cap companies with a history of dividend growth, along with a tactical covered call strategy on individual stocks, meaning Devo is strategically designed to offer high levels of total return on a risk adjusted basis, which it does just that, returning an average annual return of 11.67%. But before we discuss more performance, let's break down the holdings here with the top 10 out of the 36 holdings coming down to Walmart and Microsoft, Home Depot, Procter & Gamble, Visa, McDonald's, United. United Health, Goldman Sachs, Chevron, and Caterpillar. With financials taking up the vast majority of the fund's exposure, worth about 20% of the fund before covering the information technology sector and the consumer staple sectors, equally weighted here at about 15% of the exposure, as well as healthcare at 13% and the energy sector at 10%, to ultimately allow a $10,000 investment compound right into $22,172.10. If you would have invested back at the date of inception 
in 2016. But now I think it's noteworthy here to look at Devo's dividend yield and the expense ratio. Dividend yields coming in at 2.02%, while the expense ratio is at 0.56%, meaning you're going to pay $56 per $10,000 invested annually. And if you don't think that expense ratios really matter, well, you're wrong. As an example, let's compare the returns of funds that have expense ratios of, say, 0.25%, 0.5%, 0.75%. So if you invested $10,000 per year for 30 years with an annual return of about 6%, for simplicity's sake, at 0.25%, you'd be charged roughly $37,865 over 30 years. Now, you'd only be sitting on about $800,000. But just to notch up at 0.5%, you'd be charged $73,822 after 30 years, and you'd be sitting on a little over $764,000, to which you could probably guess what happens at 0.75% worth of an expense ratio, whereas the total fee works out to over $100,000, and you'd only net about $730,000, which is all to say, shop wisely for your ETFs and focus on the funds with the lowest possible expense ratios. Now, before I cover the three remaining dividend ETFs, investors, it's about time that you actually invest in yourself, take massive action, and join me here on this financial freedom journey. By by subscribing to the channel, which will ensure that you get market insights and brand new dividend stock ideas on a weekly basis. And moreover, if this content is what you've been looking for, you're getting value from it, make sure you tap on that thumbs up button for me. It just lets me know to continue to create content like this. With that, we'll get back to it with the State Street Global Advisors Dow Jones ETF Trust, ticker symbol DIA, which seeks to provide investment returns that before all the expenses correspond generally to the price and yield performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That at 100 plus years is the oldest continuing U.S. market index that has evolved into the most recognizable stock indicator in the entire world. But specific to this ETF, we're talking about 30 holdings total with the top 10 coming down to United Health, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, Caterpillar, Salesforce, McDonald's, Visa, Amgen, and Travelers, gifting all of us investors with solid exposure to the the financial sector at 21.99%, information technology making up about 19.62% of the fund, followed by healthcare at 17.53% of the fund, consumer discretionary at 16.02%, and industrials at 14%, with a much lower yield coming in at 1.73%, as well as a lower expense ratio at just 0.16%, working out to about $16 per $10,000 invested annually. But in terms of total performance, I want you to check this out, a $10,000 investment made into this ETF 10 years ago would have worked out now to $28,871.32 today. Now that is not too shabby of a deal, but if you're really looking to get a little bit riskier to quench that cash flow thirst, there's the JP Morgan NASDAQ equity premium income ETF, ticker symbol JEPQ, which has become quite a popular ETF amongst us dividend investors as it's focused on tech opportunities while executing on an option strategy that generates a whole heck of a lot of monthly income and has become very attractive to income investors across the board. So first, I just want to cover some of the fun facts, and that comes down to the fund's inception date, which was only back in 2022, so not that long of a history, but it delivers through on an impressive 9.73% dividend yield while coming in at a 0.35% expense ratio, it means $35 per $10,000 invested annually. And as far as holdings, we're talking about the top 10 being Microsoft and Apple, followed by NVIDIA, Amazon, Meta, Alpha, Alphabet, Broadcom, Advanced Micro Devices, Tesla, and Netflix. With much of the fund's exposure, of course, in tech at 41.9%, followed by communication services at 12.7%, consumer discretionary at about 11%, healthcare and consumer staples below 6%, thus making for an average of about 15.87% annualized returns, resulting in a $10,000 investment turning in $13,088.85 today, to which those of us believing and betting on the technology sector here really may find this to be their fund of choice. Next up, and perhaps what we would actually prefer is a fund that's going to give us some less risk, but of course more returns. We have the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund at ticker symbol DGRW. Also quite popular these days, which seeks to track the investment returns of dividend paying large cap companies with growth characteristics, totaling out to about 300 holdings for the investor who is in the game for the long haul. With the top holdings coming down to Microsoft and Apple, so some tech exposure, followed by Broadcom, AbbVie, Johnson & Johnson, 
Verizon, as well as NVIDIA, Home Depot, Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, and Pepsi, which gives way to plenty of exposure across sectors. Yet with the vast majority of the holdings actually in tech, we get about 29.39% there, followed by exposure in healthcare coming in at roughly 17.59%, industrials at 13%, financials at 11.66%, consumer staples at 11.29%, ultimately driving performance to the highest of highs for a monthly paying dividend ETF as a $10,000 investment made into this ETF 10 years ago would have compounded into $32,122.03 while only coming in with a 1.59% dividend yield, which proves dividend yields shouldn't be your everything decision-making factor. As a matter of fact, you also get to take advantage of a lower expense ratio at 0.28%. Now, investors, let me know which of these monthly paying ETFs you're buying or if you have a better monthly ETF in mind. Drop all your thoughts down in a comment below. Catch more insights right here or subscribe to keep up to date with every single new video.